Welcome to Frost Sessions, the Frost School of Music's official podcast. On this week's episode, MacArthur Fellow, 2019 Grammy Award winner and Frost faculty artist Daphne Prieto interviews Colombian jazz piano sensation and winner of the 2016 Juan Luis Guerra Scholarship of the Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation, Jesus Molina. Listen to their candid conversation about the importance of being a music ambassador, having a supportive family, keeping the faith, and coming to America. Thank you for joining us today, and remember to stay tuned to Frost Sessions. This episode is brought to you by the Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation. Jesus Molina was able to achieve his dreams thanks to the Juan Luis Guerra Scholarship presented by the Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation. Are you applying to a music school? Follow the Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation on Instagram at Latin Grammy FDN for updates on the upcoming 2021 scholarship application process. Hello, Jesus. I'm really happy to, uh, to have here a very uh, dear uh, colleague and friend. We actually worked together. We had Jesus with us at the Frost School of Music. Um, my name is Daphne Prieto, and I am actually a faculty of the Frost School of Music. And uh, we have now uh, Jesus Molina uh, as a special guest. And uh, I am, in a way, kind of a special guest. We're going to have an open discussion here about, you know, music and our background and... Uh, you know, where are we coming from, where we are now, what are, you know, our uh, dreams and, and what is coming up uh, soon for us. It's always very exciting as an artist, uh, you know, to tell the story and things like that. Uh, Jesus, welcome. Thank you for, for joining us. Thank you so much, guys, for inviting me. It means a lot. Um, such a privilege, Master Daphne. It's like, remember when we did that amazing gig in, in Miami? Oh, my God. And no way to repeat that. Who knows if we're gonna be able again to? That's right. The privilege to perform in front of a live audience, but just God knows. Yes. Uh, yeah, we we make it happen. We make it happen again. Uh, for sure. I mean, things. You know, the the pandemic thing is is definitely something very, uh, you know, present now in the life of all of us. And you know, at some point it will definitely happen and will go away and we will we'll continue with you know things that we love and. Anyway, out of that experience, which it was the first time that I met you personally, uh, you know, I had a great uh, a time uh, working with you and, and, you know, get to know you and talk and things like that. And I just want to ask you the first question because it's always very uh, intrigued and, and uh, wonderful to hear how, uh, uh, how did you get started into music when you were uh, a little, just briefly, you know, how you got into, into music? First of all, everything started when my grandmother stole a little tiny keyboard. I was like four years old, and okay, like she wrote the keyboard to me, and I started like with no knowledge of music. Happy birthday to you, happy, oh my God, like this guy gonna be a musician. <laughs> After when I was seven years old, my mom put me on, on, on the church. Mm -hmm. that started like, <clears throat> learning every day in the church. When I am 12 years old, I decide myself, well, you know what? I don't want to be more piano player. I'm going to be saxophone player now because I really love the sax. And my mom always telling me, oh, I really want to learn sax by, sax by myself. I, you know, she never going to do it. And, and I did it by myself. I played sax. Mm -hmm. But after, when I am like 15 years old and I start discovering Eric Marienthal, all of these people, I discovered this piano player called Brian Culberson. And I saw, oh my God, how that guy played the piano. I really want to play the piano like that guy. And after I met Oscar Peterson, all of these jazz stars, and oh, wow, this is a long, long path to take, okay? I want to do it. I'm yeah. practicing every day and until now and keep learning, learning, and learning. And such, such a blessing, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's always a. Uh... You know, it's behind the scene of a musician. It is a lot of dedication, a lot of passion, and a lot of love and uh, an inspiration that we receive from other artists, which help us out one way or another. Even if we don't meet them uh, personally, but they mean so much to us. Uh, the the work and the music, and and we feel identified with what they do. And then you know, we take it to a more personal, uh, you know, place uh, as as we develop, uh, you know, artistically through life, right? 
Yeah. Um, and how how did you end up in the U.S.? What what? How long have you been here? Uh, what is the bridge? You know, kind of the way that got you here in the in the U.S. now. Honestly, the biggest blessing I could have from God is uh, bringing Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation to my life. Because it's like they had a huge contest in 2016. No, 2015, they started with the Enrique Iglesias scholarship. And my grandmother saw uh, something in Telemundo, a TV show. Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation giving away the scholarship uh, Enrique Iglesias. And my grandmother called me, oh my God, you, you should apply. You always wanted to go to Berkeley. You, you should apply. That scholarship is just yours. And, and I said to my grandmother, you know what? That's not, that, that's not true. I'm completely sure somebody else is going to win it. I don't, I don't want to waste my time applying. Right. To the places. And I didn't apply. I didn't apply for the for the Enrique Iglesias. After I saw in the social media that Juan Luis Guerra starting to promote this scholarship with Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation, which was a privilege for me. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna apply this time. And when I was like filling the application and all of the things, when I gonna press send like this, I said, somebody else gonna win this. I will never win this. And I sent the application. After that, three months later, I forgot completely that I sent an application or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they sent the email saying, oh my God, you are final finalist of, of this uh, scholarship. And I, 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 I never gonna forget that experience. I was in a recording a studio, recording literally folk music from my city, from my hometown, mm -hmm. with out of tune singers. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, that moment where I realized that I am fi fi finalist, finalist. Oh my God, I said, for me, it's more than enough being a finalist of something so big. Mm -hmm. It comes the moment when they call me again and they told me that I won the scholarship. I couldn't believe that. Like they chose me among everybody, above everybody, they chose me, which is a privilege for me. And I promise God and I promise myself I'm gonna represent always this incredible foundation because without them I couldn't be where I am right now. And they helping me so much. And they help me every single time, and such a blessing they are for my life. And everything, everything that is happening right now in my life, it couldn't be because of because of God and because of them. Like it could, it couldn't be. It is because of God and because of them that everything is happening. Thank God. Yeah, there is always that, that moments that we keep very grateful of the opportunity, uh, and uh, and then you know give us that that kind of a. Uh, a, a impetus uh, to keep to keep on going, you know, uh, through everything else, and you know, we always remember that with a great uh, gratitude. Um, so now, where where you at? Where do you live? Uh, I was. I think didn't you get married? I think yeah. you got married, right? Married. Congratulations! Thank you so much. I got married on May eighth. We have been now almost five months married. And we married in Las Vegas. We all lived in Las Vegas. And after we did a proper ceremony recently in Boston, and I live here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Nice. Congratulations. That's a, that's a big change in your life, too. A ah, huge change. Yeah. Keep working hard. Great things. Because you're married and but you live together, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, in a sense, in, you know, because it's a different kind of life when you're, you know, uh, now or... No, when you find your partner, everything is easy. When yeah, you, yeah. person, like, living together is never going to be like, like, uh, oh my God, this is so comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's life. That's a beautiful stuff. And then in, in Los Angeles, are you... Uh, you're doing some specific uh, projects now that you're working on on the 
Yeah, this is a blessing because since I moved here, and a lot of actors, a lot of musicians that saw that I moved here, everybody's like, hey, come and hang to my house. I received in my inbox like messages from Seth, the guy that is the DJ, producer of Katy Perry, producer of all of these people. Mm -hmm. like, hey, come and hang. And, and he gave me a bunch of work. Same with this type of artist like Derek Hoff, the guy that is dancing with the stars. Yes. The guy, Derek Hoff, like, oh my God, mm -hmm. come to us and you're going to play something and me and my fiance, we're going to dance something. Something like right. Latin music, or, let's do it. And it's like planning a lot of videos. Recently, Master, <laughs> you don't want to believe this, but you initiate something special. I remember that day that, that you told me, come on, you want to sing now. You want to sing today, this I day. I told you. Now I am about to get a huge record deal, thank God. That's great. A, a lot of friends that are helping me and all of that as a singer. And I cannot believe that this yeah. is, right now we have three, three record labels that we're talking about, about this thing, because it's like, for me, it's a privilege. And if it happens, I'm gonna be grateful forever. And if it happens, now it's another page that's great so you're working now you're working now on the on the music and and things or you pra you practically have it almost done everything right already like uh everything music wise yeah music -wise, but we gotta keep learning every day so yeah of course no what i'm saying for that first record that you're gonna be a, as a as a you know a professional singer that's a, <laughs> a <singer>. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is that I released like two singles and oh my god, it's like three million of views one day, two uh -huh. million of views a day. It's like different when I play the piano. It's like yeah. you reach more people, you reach another type of um, audience, which is great. And mm -hmm. the second single I released, like it was the most successful one. I put like a jazz piano solo going on in the middle part because yeah. it's like I leave my essence, what I am too. That's what, what what I thought when, when we were talking uh, at Frost when last year and and uh, you know I, I I definitely encourage you to to do the uh, you know to sing because you know now, now you sing and you sing pretty well you have your own you know voice and 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 it's just so charming and 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 then you know then you have the skills of really playing the piano as a pianist too so that adds a great dimension to your artistry uh, and. Uh, you see, it's going to be a, a very fun ride. And I wish you, I wish you, I wish you, I really wish you uh, from the bottom of my heart, the, all the best, um, you know, in every, everything that you do in there. And um, so that's, that's you doing, you doing now, um, uh, you know, trying to get together, uh, together this record deal to make, to, to produce this, uh, the songs that you're, Sing, you singing songs in, in English and in Spanish too, or just Spanish songs? Spanish is an artist, honestly, because my wife, she's an incredible pop singer and she has incredible songs. And I am like working 100% too in her career. This, like we wanna kind of like as a family cover, I cover the Spanish side and she covers all the English side thing. I see. Uh, you know, but singing in English is so hard when you don't have the appropriate accent. So, <laughs> so that's the thing. So I prefer singing in my language. And <laughs> maybe it's not that common on us. That pop thing is not that common on, on Spanish. It's more reggaeton, more Latin pop and all of that things. I am kind of trying to do all the Ed Sheeran, Justin Bieber, Charlie Puth vibe, but in Spanish, it's kind right. of like, you know, of what we want to take. And the Bolero thing, the Bolero format. Yeah, Bolero, they yeah. Playing the piano and sometimes take the sax and he sings and a simple guitar and some brushes. That's the project mm -hmm. that honestly we wanna be recording. Like it's gonna be like between three, four albums and another record deal too with the jazz side. Mm -hmm. It is another thing, like it's a blessing, like with the major record labels, like if it happens, oh my god, let's go for it. <laughs> and you know how hard is this process to be in conversations with everybody so 
Yeah, yeah, I know. There is a enormous work behind the behind the scenario of 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 actually getting to the final product and that you can enjoy it and and share with the, you know with everyone, you know. Yeah. So and um and your family is your family is still in in Colombia, right? That's what yeah. I, but you in which which part of Colombia uh, is uh, which town Jesus are you from in Colombia? Yeah. Alejo Sucre, Colombia. We are from town close to Cartagena, the coast. We live in the beach. Oh, I see. So you enjoying the beach in the in Los Angeles too? Oh no, yeah, I am a beach guy. I love the beach. When I have any <laughs> opportunity to go, I just go. Today we're gonna go again. Like the beach here, like we live like ten minutes from Malibu. Like it's like it's a beautiful right. place. Right. I love this sector where you just can just drive 10 minutes and you're in the beach. So. And the weather is not Boston, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, thank God. <laughs> uh, yeah, Boston. Wow. How long, how, how many years uh, did you uh, spend in Boston, Berkeley? My God, it was like three years and a half. Yeah, three and a half. But you had a good time there. It really, I mean, you make some connections there. That was your kind of a landing here in the US? The biggest blessing in my life, honestly, because it's like I I met all my musicians, all these important people that I make music with. I met my wife there too. So Berkeley was definitely everything. Like a huge place where I connected with everybody. So right. thank God that thank Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation, like this is possible. Like coming to US with all your expenses paid that's the most huge privilege you can have man. yeah yeah it's definitely a, a great thing to have uh you know support from from uh, organizations like this that that support young yeah. artists and uh and talented uh you know uh artists that will eventually fly as you're doing now <laughs> <laughs> that's great but I'm really happy for for you and all the things that uh, that you're going uh, through now and all these uh, exciting projects that uh, they're coming up soon. And uh, so you go back? Do you go back to to Colombia and visit? Uh, have you gone back? Are you thinking to maybe perform even, you know, even just any kind of perform? Cor I mean, in the media future, not huh? Of course, that's the dream. The dream is going and perform everywhere. And now, if if all of this works perfect, the dream is like go and perform in Japan, Tokyo, who knows? And tomorrow we come to Mexico, Arena, and sing. Right. And tomorrow we go to Europe and right. play jazz festival. And we come back to Colombia and sing for right. everybody. Kind of like a division. Yeah. No, I know. I mean, it's always it's always exciting. The you know the aspect of of really playing live the music is 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 a very important part of a of a you know musician. Uh, but you know, there's something very special also when you uh, go back home. Uh, could you imagine yourself in your hometown doing that concert that that you really would like to do, and your grandma or your mom is there, and and you know the family and your friends because you know. We had friends that stay there, that see us grow, that were with with us not only in music but you know playing uh, in the streets and you know the brothers that we always keep in our hearts and being there back, uh, you know playing for them. Uh, it must be a really, uh, I mean, it happened to me because I went back like a couple of years ago to Cuba and I play at the jazz festival there and I. Uh, I brought it, my sextet, but then we did a big band also. And, you know, it just felt like a, a great family gathering reunion when I saw the audience and, you know, the, after the concert, uh, it's just a, a, gre a great, uh, you know, gratifying experience uh, deeper, you know, that, you know, when you go to places and people appreciate you uh, from different places, but, is 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 a great thing, but you know, going back home and and playing and seeing the smile of you know of 
uh, you know, your your friends and your family, uh, you know, I think this is, is definitely a, a something really, uh, you know, really fun to uh, to have in mind as a as a possibility, you know, mostly because they probably don't have that way of doing it by, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's a kind of a very unique experience, you know. Yeah, uh, you are completely right, Master. Honestly, that's a dream, going to my hometown and someday playing some music for them there. That's yeah. gonna be huge. Yeah. So I know you, you I see you have a, a few, uh, we are doing the, a lot of cameras here as I have here also my, <laughs> A lot of cameras and stuff, and yes. a lot of a lot of things, you know. That's the what you do in your, most of your videos and stuff like that. You do it in there now, eh? Yeah, everything, and zoom, and more zoom, and zoom, and zoom, and zoom. Yeah, and keep zooming. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, I mean, um, so so you're. Um, you're now in a very uh, exciting place, meaning that you let, you're meeting a lot of people there in Los Angeles, and who knows, you might end up in a movie very soon or so. That's that's a that's a different level, also, right? That's the dream, actually. Like, it's a lot of like people, like directors, like they hear some of my tracks that I released recently with another French label, like a, a, a jazz label thing. Mm -hmm. And they have, they want like a, do something with one of my tracks and we're doing a lot of conversations too. And the movie thing is gonna be a blessing too. Because honestly, like, you know, like these days musicians, internet produ productions and all of these things gonna be like the, the business. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was having a, a conversation in one of these uh, meetings also uh, online, and uh, I was I was talking about the difference between you know what it used to be a musician before and nowadays. That's you know before most of the uh, of the planning or the kind of the the way or the procedure uh, in terms of 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 making. A career, you know, you write your music, then you perform it, and then, and then you go and you record it, but you get paid for from the, you know, uh, from your um, record label, and then the record label does all the promotion and things like that. But nowadays we still have to do that, but adding our own promotion, our own investment, independently also from, from that that the record label, you know, might be doing. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, because it's just, uh, you know, it's, it just has become that kind of a way of uh, of keeping ourselves as an artist out there, you know, uh, and because we we live out of the, uh, in a way, it's a service uh, uh, to the people. So we live uh, out of the, cons you know, people consume your work, and uh, uh, now. You know, every musician and artist had to really uh, be on top of the game on that. Huh? It's very. Uh, I mean, for some, it's, it's it's challenging. For you, it might not be that much because you're you're younger in a generation that kind of was, uh, you know, already brought with all these things, you know, uh, with all the technology, etc. But uh, I I'm not, you know, it probably challenging for, uh, you know, older generation to kind of catch up, uh, you know, <laughs> in the in the technical, uh, you know, getting all this Zoom and, you know, pressing buttons and things like that. Uh, yeah, that's the thing, but anyways, yeah. that's the... Yeah, that's the, way, that's, the, that's the way to do it nowadays, yeah. So anyways, I mean, is, uh, is there anything you want to... Uh, to say uh, 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 in terms of of uh, of of what's uh, you know um, kind of the overall uh, of yourself, meaning what's you know what your intentions are, maybe as a as just as a human being or as a musician, 
whatever to the to the world uh, to the world now that uh, um, you know uh, sometimes it seems to be very overwhelming. A lot of things happening, uh, and uh, and you know how how you keep uh, yourself kind of focused uh, is one of the the biggest uh, you know things nowadays because there is so much going on uh and uh you know how do you deal how do you deal with with staying focused uh in, in what you want to uh just just for the listeners here join us uh uh that are join uh this conversation you know to get an insight from you on you know kind of a are you a disciplined guy are you someone that has to you know tell yourself hundred times you have to do this and and then some part of yourself is no nah, I don't want to do it you know that kind of things that <laughs> it might happen it happens a lot you know uh, but you know we, I would like to hear uh, your thoughts about um, your strategy in a way how to keep yourself uh, self focus on well that's something that honestly as a musician, as a human beings, we struggle every single day because what is discipline? Discipline is doing what you don't like to do sometimes. Um, but more than that, I think like the thing that drives me the most is just the fact that you have a responsibility as a musician when God gave you a voice, when God gave, when God gave you a certain thing like some people watch you it's a huge responsibility for keep inspiring others to be better version every day you know it's like if i just practice every day and do all of this it's for what it's really for oh yeah for yes for feed my ego thing or just discover new things or keep inspiring others, and the others say to themselves, oh my God, yeah, this is so special, and I really want to work every day hard. I really take this guy as an example. If he could do this, I am in the same position that I could do it too. Right. It's honestly like the thing that drives me the most and to keep focus is how to inspire others. And the huge responsibility that we have in our hands as an ambassadors in music, in music ambassadors, it's like, okay, every day you need to discover new things, every day you need to do new things or keep this thing going on because it's like, let's say, oh, no, yeah, no, I don't want to study anymore. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to practice. So I think with these three courses that I know already, I think I have everything. So <laughs> that's the thing. Like even Chick Korea, all of these legends, Herbie Hancock, these guys, incredible talent, they keep practicing and they keep practicing every day and learning every day. And that's the main thing. And first of all, another thing that helps me a lot to maintain focus is knowing from who and how I got my gift that is coming from God. And everything that I do is going to be for him, doesn't matter what. And giving the glory to him through this music that he gave to me, that's how and why I live. And man, like when you work hard, comes opportunities. Like it's like three things: talent, opportunity, talent. Uh, oh my God, I forgot. I always talk about this: talent, opportunity, and discipline. When you combine these three. Mm -hmm. When you combine the talent with the opportunity, the, the talent with the discipline comes the opportunity. There's a lot of people with opportunity that they don't have talent, that they don't have discipline. A lot of people that have discipline, but they maybe don't have that much talent and they don't have opportunity. A lot of people with talent, incredible talent, but they are not disciplined and they don't have opportunity. But when you combine the talent and you combine the discipline, the opportunity comes by themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, like, we have incredible foundations like Latin Grammy that they always check in talents. They always check, okay, who is playing there? Who, who is these people? Who is this? We want to help. We're going to take all of these talented people and rescue them. 
you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not excuse. I know, I know. Yeah. You gotta work every day. Work every day and work hard. And yeah. someday everything gonna happen. If, yeah. if you don't wait for it, it just comes by itself. If you just focus and keep doing great music and great music and studying every day. So I think. Yeah, I feel, I feel the same way uh, in terms of that responsibility. And, uh, you know, I've been also blessed in my own uh, uh, career and life. Uh, I've been, you know, having gotten, you know, awards and uh, from the uh, Grammys and being nominated in the Latin Grammys uh, as well a few times and uh, being nominated and won the Grammy and, and also that got the MacArthur. Uh, you know, that was an unbelievable experience also. Uh, Uh, which actually, it, 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 you know, a little inside that day specifically, I was very, uh, you know, one of the days that you don't feel uh, completely uh, full. Uh, and, and I was kind of, you know, uh, a little bit down and things like that. And one of the sudden I received a phone call from the director of the foundation, the Makato Foundation. And he asked me, uh, he, he just said, you, you, I'm, I'm speaking with Daphne Prieto. Yeah, yeah, and Daphne. Prieto. Well, uh, we just want to let you know, you know, the news that you have won uh, this uh, prize, and you know, which to me, I kind of start shaking, and and actually, I I I told him, you know, are you sure this is? You're not kidding me, right? This is <laughs> this is not, you know, scam or something like that, uh, and uh, and that was a great, uh, you know, that was one of the times that I felt. You know, there's always someone watching you, and always someone looking at, at what you're doing, and followers, and you know, um, people that are appreciative of, you know, what we do humbly uh, from our hearts, and and you know, with the love that uh, we can bring through music uh, to the world. Uh, you know, I think uh, music is healing in so many different ways uh spiritually emotionally uh it takes a great deal intellectually uh for us to actually um uh, you know understand but also organize because you know musicians we musicians in this case uh we uh our labor is the organization of sound so we organize sounds uh and uh <clears throat> and therefore you know we have that responsibility it's, an, it's a, a, like an architect Uh, he has the responsibility of having a, a, a you know, someone that, uh, that uh, you know, an architecture or, or, or such that uh, it has beauty, but also it can support itself, right? Uh, uh, and, and it can be efficient and, and it can be ap appreciated and, and useful in so many different ways. Uh, so music nowadays, actually because of this pandemic, The COVID-19 uh, has actually <clears throat> uh, become much more uh, profound to many people. And, and I think people, in a way, have been, you know, kind of appreciating more what we do. Uh, even though for us, uh, you know, the possibilities are, we have to go for, you know, using a lot of alternative uh, possibilities now because, you know, we cannot perform live right um or or in, in the best case scenario we can perform live in a in a place with mask on and have a very restricted uh you know audience and then broadcast it you know live live streaming or something like that but you know that makes us uh grateful for what we have actually you know when good times better times will come i think we'll be more ready Uh, to 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 really uh, appreciate it more, uh, you know, playing live and give, uh, in a way, uh, you know, each other a hug, uh, instead of being, you know, distancing and you know not touching each other and and things like that, it will give us um, that kind of awareness of spiritual awareness and in in ourselves, right? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. So, anyways, I'm I'm really happy to uh, to uh, that everything that you're going uh, through now and your new life, uh, uh, your you know your 
what you're doing in your career is very exciting and uh and i'm looking i'm really looking forward to hear the the albums by you singing also <laughs> please send me a copy i want to have a copy of that Master, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for wanting to talk to me and um, everybody that is watching this. Thank you so much for watching this. Yeah, thank you everyone, and uh, thank you for for uh, you know being here with us. Uh, we're really excited to uh, to always you know talk to very young uh, and and also very talented and people that are really committed to develop something uh, musically, spiritually and in so many different ways, uh, very positive in the world. So thank you everyone that is watching uh, today, uh, this, uh, this conversation. And uh, I wish you all the best, Jesus. And uh, thank you, man. All the best to you. Yes, indeed. Yeah. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.